Dan's been great, honestly. He's a really good mentor for me. Keeps on me and keeps me informed about what I should or shouldn't be charging about things and, you know, trying to help me build my mowing routes and all that. And do you charge enough for his liking? Nah, if he was really stoked with me yesterday, I think I made $1,370 in eight hours. I think that average is $171 an hour. So he was very, very happy with that. And I, I'm happy with that too. <laughs> so today on the Jim's Mowing podcast, the Jim's Group podcast, we're joined by Andy. And Andy's from Jim's Mowing up in Deegan in Queensland. And now Andy, you've only been with us for just a bit over a month. So it's great to be able to check in with you because I remember you from training. I didn't know, I saw the name, but I didn't remember your name. And I, seen, I remember you because we interviewed you at training when you were down here, which we haven't even released yet. So to jump back on so quick and to hear you're doing well, after the 30-day email with Jim is fantastic for us to see as well. It's real refreshing as well to see you go from training and all pumped up to doing it and doing so well already so early. So you're surprised by how well you've been going within the 30 days. Oh, you know, I'm I'm really surprised. Or well, maybe not, but I've been working working very hard at it. So I was hoping I'd be successful because I was working hard enough for it. But yeah, no, I've been working six day weeks and servicing equipment on the seventh day and spend a bit of time with the kids and on, on Sunday. But um, yeah, no, I'm really, really stoked with how it's all turning out. Yeah. So have you found the first 30 days? How, how's it been? Cause it's quite, it's quite rare that we interview someone from training into within 30 days. So how's, how's it been the first month of business? Oh, it's been, it was been grueling at the start, but I'm getting more of a handle on, on how to do things and faster with my techniques and and also with my fitness as well like you know i can move quicker for longer periods now you know i gave up smoking before like before coming along to two gyms and then you know i'm really really appreciating like the fitness level i've got now is basically i feel like i'm a teenager again without wow yeah, you can't not be an unfit mowing fr- gardening gyms mowing franchisee. It just doesn't yeah. work. I don't know how some of them do it, but with smoking, honestly, it's just like you got to you <laughs> need that need that oxygen to push the mower. Absolutely. So, how how was the first week? Then, how was the adjustment? Let's just lay it out for people because you've come to training, you're all pumped up, ready to go. First week, what happened? You just tell us about the well, first week. I was, a bit, I was a bit chilly in Melbourne, and that was like I'd, I wish I brought more jumpers. It was like winter up here. <laughs> But uh, when I got home, it was 37 degrees. It was just in the middle of a heat wave. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a struggle that first day, actually. Well, like I got home and, and um, I did a job for a friend of mine and she ended up following me home because she was worried I was having heat stroke. And then I got home and I basically collapsed onto the floor and the missus was like, what do I do? What do I do? And I, I couldn't control any of my muscles. They were all like cramping and, and she dragged me into the bath to have epsom salts and stuff and i didn't have any high glide either i was just on the oh wow and end up getting visalite in me and it ended up sort of helping a bit and so now we've just got lots and lots of hydrolyte on the go you know for when we need it we, we always have hydrolyte every day at work these days well do you so full body cramp first day it sounds like you had full body yeah, cramp full, yeah full body cramps yeah full body <laughs> cramps it's not good did you think but, at any point go oh geez what have i done here like what, yeah, yeah, yeah how did this yeah I definitely yeah. thought, what the hell have I got myself into? <laughs> now, going on from there, did it get a little bit easier for you? What was, how did, how did the progression then go in the first month? How can you just lay through it? In the first week, I had that 37 degree day and all, all the full body cramps. And then we had a bit of rain as well. And then we had Australia Day, public holiday that week as well. And so that was the only week I didn't make the pay for work guarantee income. And every other week I have, but. That week I didn't, and it, you know, it makes sense with the weather and the public holiday and, and the full body cramps. But it was kind of kind of good that it did rain, give me a, give my body a bit of a chance to recuperate from that first day. But yeah, yeah. a bit of a shock to the system. But sometimes you got to shock your system in order to like get it to realize all your cells realize that they're changing and it's, you're not sitting around anymore. You know? What were you doing prior? What were you doing prior, Andy? Well, I was DJing and I was uh, yeah. doing a hire work and um so I'd, i would hire equipment which is how i was able to afford jumping onto gyms without any sort of finance was to solve all my generators and, and my equipment my decks and all that sort of stuff and i just wanted to change change of course because you know i had a had a baby girl come along about 10 months ago and i just we rent and and we wanted to try and join a franchise that Knew where they were doing more than I did anyway, and have better business advice and mentorship and stuff because yeah, we 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 are sick of renting and we're really me, me and my partner, we're really keen to 
buy our own home and we just thought that we were never going to do it the way we, we were going. Really, really common thing and a lot of people can relate to that. And I was going to say as well, Andy, the actual using the equipment, because that can be a concern for people that go, you know, I haven't used this before. Or I don't know what to do on this. So how's that been going from you for the for the learning of on the tools? How's that been? Yeah, well, it's been pretty good. I, I'm pretty, pretty knowledgeable about about some things when it comes to engines and not not the most at all but um i I use a lot of battery equipment i use ego i bought a bunch of milwaukee stuff before before i started doing it and then i kind of switched to ego i just like the uh more waterproof nature of it and the the higher voltage and uh yeah i don't want to endorse any 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 brand though but um i just did i guess but i like like the ego stuff but I, i did get a zero turn ego mower as well and it gave me lots of 10 amp batteries to put in the blowers and stuff so i got two two ego ego blowers we like dual wheel them at job sites and stuff which will push all the leaves out of the way and stuff there you go a lot of our franchisees use some sort of ego set up in there you know whether it be a blower or edger and yeah. whatever else in there they'll use it and before i started as well i'd got the trailer and i i set up an inverter that i had on around the garage and i had a, a lifeboat battery that i put in there and i chucked a solar panel on the First thing I did to the trailer was pop pop a pop an old solar panel that was lying on the side of the house on it, and it seems to go really well. And and then I got a red arc, a red arc DC to DC charger on there as well, and so it gives me plenty of power. I don't ever have to plug it at a, at a customer's house or anything like that. That's great. You saved yourself a lot of money doing it yourself too. That's really really good yeah. to hear. And the the setup as well, you got the perfect climate up where you are for it. Now it's fun, John. Plenty of sunshine. <laughs> And how much how much weight do you reckon you've lost in your first month? Because that's something I I see a lot of people coming in, and I talk to them maybe three months later, and you just see the difference. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm lost. I guess so. How much? I don't. I haven't, I haven't weighed myself recently. Uh, about yeah. I think I was losing at the start around one and a half kilos a week or something like that. Wow. And I kind of pinned it out to build up the muscles. Honestly, all my muscles feel really big and hard now. Yes, the, <laughs> the misses are on them. <laughs> It's definitely a great way to get get in shape and get paid for it at the same time as well. Yeah, when you when you join the hedging and stuff like that, like all the hedgings, all the biceps and shoulder work, and it's just it gets gets up here going. That's for sure. Absolutely. Now I was going to say, what type of jobs are you doing in your business? Do you want to outline for people the services you've been doing in the first month? Well, I've been doing. I like my gardens, honestly. Like I do like mowing and regular mows, and and I do get a lot of regular mows with a lot of the gardens that I do. But I do hedging and. Um, and garden maintenance for a lot of for a lot of elderly customers, and then you know more of the work working professionals would get me to do the regular mows. But yeah, I do enjoy hedging. Honestly, like I just got a elephant trunk harness because I got like two thousand dollars worth of hedges to do this week, and I was like, oh man, I gotta like gotta order one of these harnesses. I've <laughs> been wondering what they were called, and I just went on some forums the other day, and I found out what they were called, and then I found out. Lots of people in Melbourne sell them, but no one sells them up here in Queensland. So, okay. yeah, I had to order one of eBay, I think. And yeah, absolutely. Now, how's this? You mentioned the pay for work guarantee before, which is great, and it's great to hear that you use it. And that's what it's there for. How's the support been otherwise? Like, what sort of support? What sort of questions are you asking from your franchisor? I don't. I haven't used the pay for work guarantee. Oh, you haven't. I just the only only uh, we the only week I haven't made over two grand. Was oh, okay. Week. Yep. And um. Yeah, no, Dan's been great, honestly. He's a really, really good, really good mentor for me, and um, you know, he keeps keeps on me and and keeps uh, me informed about what I should or shouldn't be charging about things, and and um, you know, trying to help me make sure I'll try to build my mowing routes and and, and all that. And do so you charge enough for his liking? Because I know he charged a lot back in the day when he was doing it. Yeah, no, nah, she was really stoked with me yesterday. Um, I made, I think, I made thirteen. Hundred and seventy dollars in eight hours. Uh, in a while yesterday, so I think that average is at one hundred and seventy-one dollars an hour. So he was very, very happy with that, and <laughs> I, I'm happy with that too. I, I well, are you surprised by how much how lucrative it is? Because obviously we put a lot of stuff online and we say you know it can be this lucrative, and you know, it might it might yeah. it might be hard to believe from an outside, but now you're in it. How do you how do you think it rewards you? Yeah, well, I mean. I guess it, I guess that high hourly rate is as well because I'm getting fitter and faster at these sort of jobs and I can get through them to a good good standard quickly. Whereas 
in the first few weeks, I might have been a bit more tired and needed more rests or more water breaks or something like that. Whereas now I can just go through and have a drink at the end of the job or something like that. And what do you think, looking back on your first 30 days, what would have been the best thing to tell your stuff at the start? So if you're starting again first week, what would you do differently? Um, what would I do differently first week? I have Hydroline on the day on day one. Hydroline, like, okay. Hydroline. The no yeah. full body cramps. Yeah, no full body cramps. Yeah. yeah, we even got like Celtic sea salt and everything. And um, I, my missus packs jerky for me as well. When I'm oh wow! Back. And, yeah. hey, just a protein and salt fiend these days. Just <laughs> like <laughs> trying to keep the muscles muscles building and the and the and the electrolytes going. There should be something for mowing contractors. Some sort of special. I don't know. I'm sure market would be big enough, some sort of drink or something, a protein drink or something where they could have all the all the things they need in them as well because it's quite a physical job. Yeah, it um, is, yeah. But I don't know, when it comes to protein drinks, I guess a lot of them are milk-based. So you don't really yeah. have to be drinking milk, milk out there on a hot day. No, <laughs> definitely not. I was going to say, Andy, as well, what does your family think about what you're doing? How they they notice a bit of a change in you or how have they found it all? Yeah. The kids are the kids are absolutely loving you know the new the new career change and um, you know my son Barnard he's always saying he's how proud he is of me and he's always like I want to be a lawn man when I'm older. And I started going on that I was, I was a new sheriff in town. I was like I'm a lawn man and so <laughs> and so he, he he loves that and he, he loves all the he, I take him for a couple little rides on the zero turn you know it's battery battery zero turn and you know go for a few rides on that he loves that and and um. No, both the kids are really, really proud of me and the baby. She's she's missing me a lot when I'm gone, but yeah. she's always keen for a cuddle when I get home and I'm like, I need to shower first. <laughs> you obviously work very hard, but obviously knowing that if you do need the flexibility as well, you can you can make that flexibility if you do need to yes, when you're um yes, when you're not out there. The flex- I, I just been trying to work hard because I know I'm at the end of summer at the moment and um you know, we're getting into winter. I just want to build like some regular customers and build the business. And so I, I don't have to be working six days a week at the moment, but you know we we are making hay, you know, during winter and everything. We could definitely look at doing some holidays, and now I don't have to be working six day weeks and and servicing equipment all that on the seventh day. It would when it gets a bit cooler, but at the moment grass is growing ridiculously fast in Queensland and be yeah, stuff crazy. And, yeah, yeah. I've heard some of the stories. I've heard some people, you know, with this how much it's growing within a week or two is quite um quite astonishing it's it's amazing up there as well yeah plenty of work i think some I think sometimes like what people class in melbourne as an overgrown mo is about a week and a half up here in some of these areas especially ones that have a bit of water sitting in the property yeah i've heard some i've heard some stuff and um i've seen some photos i just can't believe how big it can grow so quick it's quite a, it's quite amazing and um plenty of work there yeah. for you guys as well and do you have I a work really, you think really sorry. Big sorry i did a really sorry. big overgrown today and, and all the whole curbs were just completely full of grass. It was like little, little, little rainforest kind of coming down. Or, <laughs> or sorry, it was a like grass waterfall going down the curb or whatever. Oh, yeah. About five, four foot tall. Yeah. So it's amazing. I was going to say, are you looking at getting a worker on or anything like that to help you out? Well, I already have gotten a casual worker. He's, he's my old yeah. flatmate before, before we had our baby and, um, he was a chef before he came along with me, but is the the local bistro kind of got a bit quiet and he was looking for work. And I said, well, if you're looking for work, come do some gardening with me. You know, it's pretty stress-free. And, you know, if you stuff it up, it'll grow back. And and um, we'll, we'll <laughs> I won't be me, I promise. Yeah. We, we get all really well. We've been mates for like 10 years or more or longer. And he's been really enjoying it. He, he, was one wheeling to my house and it stopped working. So I gave him my old electric, well, not my old, my cup, my electric skateboard to sort of get to my house. And, and my missus makes us sandwiches to go to work. And, and you know, he, he really loves my dog as well. So it's always good when when he comes over, my dog perks up and he, he goes over and gives her a good pat. Uh, he's, he's a great bloke. And, and honestly, it's been, been really good having a casual worker come along. And he was casual, but really the work's getting so busy where it's, not really that casual. It was like what the first week he was a bit casual, and now it's like, all right, you're pretty much five, six days a week like me up now, because the, the work's been building so quick. The leads are there from Jim's group, and, you know, I've been doing a bit of networking myself, off and getting getting work as well. It works really well because, um, you know, I go like sometimes I get a lot of leads come in and I need a quote, and I kind of like 
kind of don't get many laws done in the day if you've got to go do a bunch of quotes as well. And so he can sort of stay on the job and, and quote. I mean, so he can stay on the job and do the job while I go and quote. And so because of that, I've been securing a lot of work because you do secure a lot more work if you go and meet the person themselves yeah. instead of you're doing it off of photos or whatnot. And sometimes you get caught out if you do it off of a photo. Absolutely. You know, it's a good advice. And yeah, I know it can be tempting for people to do that, but I mean, going there in person and your quoting shoot and stuff like that does a lot of wonders as well. I was going to say then from training as well, being so recent, what from training have you been implementing in your business? Like, has there been things around the quoting or how to deal with customers? What's the stuff that from training you find yourself implementing in your business as you go? Well, you know, the techniques about the, you know, application rates when it comes to fertilizer spreading and also, you know, spraying, uh, you know, when you're spraying pesticides and whatnot, you know, a lot of the things that Des teaches is really informative. And then um, obviously the health and safety, putting up the signs and the, and the, and the cones as well. You know, it gets you it gets you a lot more work. Even when you put when you got your signs out, you're a bit more professional. And a lot of the time, when I do have signs and cones out, people you know ask you for a business card or ask you to come quote their their property as well while you're doing it. You know, those are all really good tips. Good point. I've actually never heard anyone mention that before. But it's a great point about being an HNS compliant. Is that it shows you're professional and get people to come up and give you extra work. So I'm going to mention that in my training session. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, because say some people come along and they say, oh. You know, what if you do it for, you know, cash and not GST or something? And when you end up standing in your steady ground, you go, oh, mate, if I've got to put it in the scheduling system, I've got to pay GST on it anyway and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And they end up going, all right, all right, all right. But they can tell that you're reliable, that they're going to go into a scheduling app, that it's going to be booked properly. And, you know, you, you pay someone cash, that they, they there's no guarantee they even put it into a scheduling app or anything like that. Then they just forget about you. Absolutely. I was going to say, um, Andy, is there any advice maybe you'd give to someone who maybe was in your position, maybe thinking about it? Has it has it married up to the experience of what you thought it would be? Obviously, it requires lots and lots of hard work, and you need to be willing to get sweaty and and you have sore muscles every night and small sore muscles every morning as well. I guess any advice, I'd say, you know, if you've got any sort of like you've got a four wheel drive, or, or I had a Land Rover before, and I and I sold it, I bought a Hilux. Uh, single carb ute for it. I'd just say get a really light single carb ute because you're going to be carrying a lot of heavy heavy things to the dump and you don't really want to have a three ton car towing two and a half ton of trailery green waste. You want a really, really light car that's probably yep. fuel economical for quoting and zipping around and things like that, but can also tow a good couple of ton and get it get it to the uh get it to the tip. Like I I I started with the Land Rover and I sold that and I've got the Hilux and I'm already looking at getting a second Hilux or maybe a Falca single cab, one cut up. Uh, just yeah, as light as it can be, that can carry lots of weight and that's what I would recommend. That's a great bit of advice, Andy. So it's great to be in our check-in with you and thank you for um, saying that. You've got to put the hard work in and full body cramps on the first day. That's what we expect from everyone to get going but it's amazing it's, it's just fantastic yeah. for us to see yeah. as well just to meet you at training 30 days ago you know and then obviously have a, everyone has a lot of fear and trepidation about it and to see after 30 days that you're doing so well and you sound like you're really happy with the business which is fantastic for us as well to see so we're going to give you this a core voucher as well on our behalf of gyms it's two free nights at a, a state plus hotel with the core i think you got to use the nights you can't use them you can't use them in together for whatever reason you can you, you yeah. want one night at a time and you get a bunch of discounts and dining and drinks at any of your core hotel. There'll be a few up where you are. So we'll get that to you. We'll get that to you via email. But Andy, thank you very much for your time tonight. As I said, it's really great to be able to check with someone after a month that we meet in training. I remember you from training and to hear you doing so well with Jim's mowing is absolutely fantastic. I'm happy to to hear that you're happy and thank you for joining us today on the podcast. We appreciate it. Thank you. That's your lovely little one. No, it's it's great to be here. What's her name? What's her name? Uh, Her name's Natalia. Sapphire, great. Name is Sapphire. <laughs> Thank you very much for jumping on. We yeah. appreciate it, mate. No, see you, mate. Thanks, Joel. I, Thank thanks, you, see you. Thank you for listening to the episode of the More Than Just Mowing podcast by Jim's Mowing. If you do need help with your local gardening expert, please give us a call at 131 546 for Australia, 0800 454 654 for New Zealand, or head to jimsmowing.com.au or jimsmowing.co.nz. If you liked what you heard, please make sure you leave us a review as well, wherever you consume your podcast. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.